Morris, and um, I'm from SGM. Last year and for the 12 years previous to that, I was an English teacher. I've changed hats this year, so I'm in spec ed, but um, I've, came, I've come to share uh, one of the most successful projects I've ever run in a class before. So I'm really excited to tell you about it today, and I brought some students that are going to have a chance to share their experiences as well. So here's where my story began. Two years ago, I attended the Google Summit at Eastwood, and I heard this man, Kevin Bruckhauser, give one of the keynote speeches. And he was talking about a project he tried in his class called the 20% time. Um, it sounded interesting, and I, you know, I was really intrigued. I need to get my head around this. Uh, he talked about his book, The 20 Time Project, and so it looked like a nice thin summer read. So I grabbed this and, and took a look at it. And I also grabbed this one. Um, you can take a picture of this later if you're interested, but it was a great resource. Um, it talks about Genius Hour, which is related to 20% time as well. The link on this page uh, will take you to Kevin's site, which has lots of great resources about the 20 time project. Um, but really, what I needed to understand first is what is this project and what's the history? And so um, he talked in his presentation and in his book about um, a company called the 3M Corporation. And in 1948, they started the 15 time project. And so they gave 15% of their employees work week to do new, creative, innovative things. So they were sort of working outside of their normal uh, dictated job um, dis descriptions. Uh, Dr. Silver was the one who, he wanted to do something about um, sticky adhesiveness. He wanted to create something that was better, uh, could stick better than super glue. Now what he ended up with wasn't really that sticky at all. In fact, it kept coming off things. Um, so he kind of tabled it until one of his colleagues, Dr. Art, came along and um, retried uh, using this as a um, a bookmark in his hymnal, and then that's how the post it up was born. And so, um, there's the idea that um, out of mistakes can go great ideas, and that giving their employees time to work uh, was a way to create new and innovative uh, projects. Google implemented the 20% time in their um, work industry in the early 2000s, and from uh, their 20% time came Gmail, Google AdSense, and Google News. So, really, what does this look like in a classroom? So I decided that what I was going to do is give my students 15% of our course time to earn 15% of their course grade. So that equated to about once a week starting in October. Um, and as the students might talk about, uh, it kind of did this to their brains a little bit. They were, uh, you know, without restrictions and guidelines and, you know, this is what you have to do. It became a little bit overwhelming as they first dove in to the project. So, how did I start as a teacher? Well, first I went through the curriculum expectations. I was teaching a grade 11 pre-AP English course. So I went through the English 3UI uh, documents, and uh, at the end, if you want to take a look, I'll show you, it's very boring, but I went through all the curriculum expectations and decided which units I was going to cover them, and which uh, expectations I wanted them to meet using the 20% time. I focused a lot on media, oral, and uh, written expectations because I'm an English teacher, so that all worked for me. And then I worked on the deliverables. And this was something that we worked on together. In fact, we negotiated as a class and uh, came up with these. So the first thing they had to do was a proposal in front of the class uh, to kind of pitch their idea. Uh, they got feedback from both myself and from their peers. Then they had to do blogs. We settled on a bi-weekly blog, so every two weeks they were blogging for me, letting me know what was going on. Um, and uh, I, I, marked, I assessed those twice throughout the semester come back to that in a little bit. Um, they did an elevator pitch, kind of like a Dragon's Den or a Shark Tank kind of episode where they got up and had two minutes to uh, convince somebody in the room to invest in whatever project or product that they were creating. And then ultimately we finished with some TED Talks. And you can see that even within uh, our negotiables, they were allowed to choose the percent breakdown of their product in their TED Talk at the end because some students were really proud of their product and some students didn't even finish, which as we'll get to is quite okay. Um, the next thing I did was really wanted to emphasize this idea of failure and of where they're learning and the, the thing that I was most interested was about their journey throughout the project and not necessarily what they ended up with. Uh, two of my favorite quotes from the book uh, Kevin wrote is, our mistakes and failures are some of the best paths to innovation and learning and diving into rejection and failure is an incredibly productive way to build tenacity, learn new skills, create new strategies and get practice in not taking criticism personally. 
Now I know that you probably all come from different um, backgrounds, different teachables, and like as an English teacher, I want my students to walk away knowing how to write a good essay and the structure, and you know, having um, a sense of uh, passion for literature. But really, I also, more importantly, probably cared about this. You know, are my students going to have grit? Do they have tenacity? Do they have problem-solving skills? Um, and so that's where this project sort of um, combined both of the things I wanted them to, to come away with. We talked about this idea that success, a lot of people feel and, and imagine, especially a group of pre AP students, mm -hmm. think success looks like this, mm -hmm. where really success looks like um, the right hand side. And it was that middle squiggly stuff where all the interesting learning and problem solving comes out of. I showed them. Uh, this little video, so I'm going to uh, take a few minutes and show it to you. A uh, cute little guy, and it really gets to the essence of uh, failure and the heart of what happens when you're trying to uh, reach a goal. And I made a real gold work machine. A real gold work machine is a machine that creates a chain reaction that creates a really complicated one to make to do a simple task. So I made a real gold work. Um, on being wrong, which was an excellent um, addition there. 
Step three was for me to really uh, encourage this moonshot thinking for my students. So this like completely like blow the walls out, you know, stay, stick outside of the box. Um, Kevin Brookhauser on his site has a great video um, that sort of helped me emphasize this idea as well. Step four was then the bad idea factory. So to start, oftentimes brainstorming is kind of hard to get students going. So we began uh, by thinking about all the terrible, you know, ridiculous, silly ideas um, that we could try. And again, uh, Kevin has a great video on his site that I'll just share with you that I showed my students before we started. And then someone's like, no, that's a great idea. So he tried it, and throughout his project, he realized there was a section in their school that was really hard for wheelchair students to get through. And so he put a proposal through to the school board uh, to have it paved. And at the end of the semester, his final project was him standing on the paved sidewalk. Right? So we tried a bad idea factory. It was one of the, I think, most fun days we had in our class. And um, some ide great ideas did come from it. We'll take you back to the deliverables now. So remember, they had to do a proposal. So they took their bad idea that had melded into a great idea, shared it with the class, got feedback. They were building websites. So at SGM in our English department, we have our students um, build websites we please in grade nine, and they act as a digital portfolio, so it travels with them throughout every grade. So I just said, okay, we're pulling up our grade 11 page. You're gonna, on your grade 11 page, attach a, a new site or a link or a new um, section on there for your 15 time project. On there, that's where they were blogging. They were giving a little bit of background. Some of them had you know, captured pictures from our Bad Idea Factory, and they were really building um, their learning journey there. Now, I wanted to touch for a minute on the mentor part, because obviously I'm not an expert on all the things that my students were passionate about and they wanted to explore. So I encourage them to find um, community uh, members or um, experts in their field that could give them some feedback, they could ask questions from, and the students today are gonna share uh, about that experience as well. And then the elevator pitch. The link there is just a, a link to the rubric that I used uh, when they got to that stage, which is about halfway through the project. So um, back to the logistics. So once a week, I gave them a period starting in October to work on their 15 time project. I encourage you not to use Fridays. So we avoided Fridays because Fridays have a different vibe about them, right? So uh, we choose Mondays traditionally, and every day that we had a 15 time day, this is what I put on the board. So they write their name, uh, what they were working on, where they were going to be, and then if they needed to conference with me. And I took pictures for my own log to be keeping track of where students were and, and how they were progressing. Step seven was their actual blog. So they were keeping track. I encouraged them while we were blogging not only to be showing me in writing, but also to digitally, visually displaying uh, what was happening so that I could see their progress. So some of them were giving me little screenshots, some of them were taking pictures of them in action. I got video or voice recordings of them talking on the phone with their mentors. I had a student who was building a video game, and so I would get uh, each, each blog, I got a different part of her levels or her character designs as she was going. Um, and sometimes the blogs talked about great triumphs, 
And sometimes, as you can see, one blog was called My Head Hurts, and she was talking about all of the obstacles she'd come up against for those two weeks. Um, and then we culminated in our TED Talk. So I booked the school odd. Uh, we had an after-school TED Talk day. We invited uh, members of the school community and uh, parents and uh, lots of people to come. And the students got up on stage and did their own TED Talks. One of my fellow English teachers uh, did a live stream for us, so we had it on Periscope. So we're doing lots of interesting things uh, on our final day. Now, I can tell you why I thought this mm -hmm. project was so great and one of the best experiences I've had as a teacher, but I wanted to bring some students with me to tell you why uh, they found the experience to be such a positive one as well. So this is Amy, and she's going to talk about her app design project. All right, so for my 15 time project last year, I wanted to create an Android app for language learners, specifically Korean language learners, because I was one myself. And this stems from my interest in graphic design as well as coding and of course learning Korean. And so I'll just click on the first thing here. So this was my website and as you can see I planned for the app to include a variety of features including vocabulary <coughs> storing and games such as flashcards to help the users memorize their vocabulary as well as learn new vocabulary. I had a bit of coding knowledge going into this project, but not a whole lot, and none at all in app design or Java, the language used to code apps. So doing this was going to be a big challenge, and it was. Although I wasn't able to create the big multi-featured app I planned in the end, I was able to create a basic app with a variety of features, including being able to accept user input as well as linking different screens and I also learned how to change things such as the color of the apps and how it looked overall. And so as you can see in this first screenshot here, I have three text created three texts, sorry, created from user input and as well as a counter up above. And in the second screenshot here, I have text just created by myself and an add button beside it that when clicked would open a pop-up in the app. And so throughout this project, really the highlight for me was finally getting everything to work because having no app design knowledge going into this, it was really hard figuring out how exactly to code this and how exactly even the software worked. And so finally seeing everything work the way I planned, simulated on my phone, was really a great achievement for me. And clicking on the second link here, I just have a blog post with a screenshot of an email from my mentor. So I learned app design and Java from an online free course on Udacity. And I searched up one of the teachers, and he agreed to be my mentor, which was great. And I messaged him and received great responses, not only on how to code certain things, but also on never giving up and staying persistent throughout the project. And so, really, this project was a great learning experience for me because I started doing something that I had zero knowledge in, but I ended up being able to create something from scratch all by myself. And it was a really great learning experience for me, as I said. And I really hope to continue this once I am able to gain more knowledge in coding and have a bit more time for myself. So, <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Amy. So as you can see, not Englishy at all, right? Completely out of my area of expertise. Uh, Jen's going to share her project that was a little bit more uh, comfortable for me. It was much more Englishy. Go ahead, Jen. <laughs> um, hi. So I'm Jen, and um, when I first heard about, heard about the um, Time project at the beginning of grade 11, I was immediately like really excited because I had a bunch of ideas and a bunch of things that I really wanted to take this opportunity to pursue. Um, I realized after like the bad idea factory and a few of these things that maybe a few of them were unrealistic ideas. Um, so I settled for something that I've always wanted to do and I decided to pursue writing a novel for the 15 time project. Um, so this was a very difficult journey. It started off with a little bit of research. I read Stephen King's On Writing, which was actually a really good resource for me. Took a lot of notes on it, and I found a mentor, um, Kristen Harnish, who's the author of The Vintner's Daughter and The California Wife. Um, we communicated via email and um, on the phone, and it was really useful to talk to her because she um, was someone 
who hadn't pursued writing as a career, but somehow managed to write novels throughout um, her life, just like on the side, while she was still like raising kids. And I thought that was really inspirational because obviously um, it takes a lot of time to write a book, so it was, it was nice to talk to her about that. She also taught me like one of the most important lessons that I learned throughout this entire process, which is that um, you can't be afraid to write. In the area of writing, you have to write put out the words on the page, even if they're terrible the first go around, the act of writing is in the revising, and usually you'll end up completely changing your original um, product. So um, the um, project um, was really difficult for me because of discipline and organization. Mm -hmm. So um, I to organize um, my original ideas and like really plan out my plot so that when I was sitting down to write, I wasn't just working backwards and trying to fill in all the blanks that I had left. I um, put a huge banner in my room and basically devoted an entire wall of my room to planning out my novel. <laughs> so I would add to it whenever I had an inspiration and I would map out what was going to happen when in my book. Then I had to set word goals for like on a daily basis so that I could always be writing and making progress. Um, in the end, I did not reach my final goal of writing an entire novel because that's actually a pretty daunting and time consuming <laughs> task to do within one semester. But I did write 35 pages of fully edited, best writing I've ever created, and it was a perfect start to what I still work on now, and I worked on over, a lot over the summer. So I'm really grateful that I got to do this project because it gave me a head start on something I've always wanted to do. In closing, what I wanted to say is that I have never had students come back to me and say, Miss, you know that essay you had me do, or you know that <laughs> drama thing I had? And I worked on it over the summer, and I want to keep coming back to it. Um, and, and, and so this assignment really um, birthed like a passion for what the kids were exploring. Um, we've created a learning cycle at my school this semester and so there are, are five other um, subject areas of teachers who are trying this or kind of a morphed version of this in their classes. Uh, we've got an engineer, engineering class, computer science, phys ed, um, student activities, another, an English class. And so um, yeah, I just encourage you to think about if this is something that you could make work in your classroom. Does anyone have any questions? Both students talked about mentors. Did yeah. you encourage them to find mentors? Like that was yeah. like part of the project? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I would say in my last session, someone said, what are the you know, three challenges you came across? Because of course, nothing works out perfectly. Um, one of the challenges was helping the students find everyone getting a mentor. Um, and ultimately, not everyone did have a, a mentor in the end. There was a few students who did a lot of their mentoring through reading. So they joined an on -learn, online learning community, or they found articles or books that really helped them that you know, that were things that I can help them with. Yeah. All right. Oh, do you have one last oh, question? Like, it's a okay. Anyways, uh, I'm going to pop up the first page. So if you didn't get a chance, you can grab the, um, the bit.ly link. But thanks for coming.